The way I see it, depending on how you want to flip it, spin it, and look at it. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As the title tells today, we're discussing Atlanta season one, episode four, The Strides in Effect. Such a fitting name for what goes down in this episode. As per usual, I'm gonna break the plot line into two. It's just easier rather than flip-flopping. There's a lot going on. We're gonna discuss what happens with Paperboy and this new character, Zan. Who is giving me socks tease? If this character reminds you or is aligned with Sock's energy, let me know down below. And then we're going to talk about the Darius Urn plotline. You know me. I love me a Darius adventure. And this was one of my favorites of season one. It's top tier. Six years later, it's still up there. So let's get into it. This episode opens up with Urn and Al outside of a strip club. And I'm thinking, wait, you just got bailed out. How do you have money for this? But okay, we're just gonna go with it. I'm gonna assume that Al is paying for Urn. Urn doesn't have it like that. <laughs> okay, one thing I didn't really take in the first time watching this years ago, Urn has always been on the ball when it comes to managing Paperboy. They're here having a good time doing what guys do in ATL. And he's talking to him about, I love when he did the air flute. Things he can do to make himself stand out in the music industry, what he should do for the next step and what's needed. And I love that because it's mixing family with pleasure going out as well as business. And I feel like a lot of times people can't balance all three, but it's obvious that Earn is very determined. He's not just flying by the wind with the situation. He sees it as a real opportunity for growth for both of them. Out of nowhere, the door opens wide and this character that will forever be remembered, as soon as I saw him, I started laughing because I remembered how much he did in this episode, Zan. Zan, like I said at the top of this, reminds me so much of Socks. He's one of those disturbers, those troublemakers, to just someone who causes problems, an agent of chaos, if you will. He comes smiling, bright. He gives me Tiger Woods vibes. And I love how this is one of the first episodes where they're like, is he black? What's going on with that? <laughs> because they did that a lot in season two and three. This episode, like many other episodes, has so many themes, including what is blackness? What does it mean to be broke versus poor? The idea of social media, mental health, clout, hell of a drug. There's so much we'll get into it. This crazy character, Zan, has all the energy. He's putting his hand on Al's shoulder like he knows him. Al's not about that. I love Tyree Henry's face because it says everything that's need to be said without saying anything. This character comes on the scene, pun intended, with this very obnoxious energy. He's taking pictures, and now this is the third time that Paperboy is being photographed, but the second time that you can tell he's not really about it, because it was last episodes that we reviewed that he seemed like he was at least okay to take pictures, those family pictures with that woman and those kids. He was coming out of holding, and in today's episode, he was a no-go, he was not here for it. It was Ern who said, okay, enough is enough. But Zan didn't really get the memo. He even gave Darius some smoke and Darius was confused. And for Darius to be confused, that is saying a lot. He's trying to be very aggressive, doing what influencers and content creators do, networking. Al is not about giving him his number, but Ern does. <laughs> and later on the episode, we find out that is a big mistake because he is just inundating him with messages all day. Next scene is they're at the house and they're talking about some things and I love this line. I feel like we should have a segment of every single episode. In this episode, he's basically talking about everything is made up. And I love that because when you think about it, every creation in the world, every technological advance is made up. There's no such thing as anything. We all give things worth and value. And that really speaks to the undercurrent of what this episode is about. Whether it's social media, as you can see, that paper boy is angrily Twitter finger texting away. I love how they made this clicking sound so loud in the scene to exemplify how furious, frustrated, and annoyed he was. These are one of those moments where back then I'm like, paper boy, you're grown. But then after listening to a pod last week, if you know Roy and Maul, you know what I'm going to say. Maul is always cool as a cucumber. And he was basically telling his other pod mates that cyberbullying is not real. When you live in the streets and you're about that life and you know what it's like to get run up on or chased or robbed, cyberbullying is light work. But it's ironic because this paperboy character embodies someone who grew up in the hood, but he was still clearly impacted by cyberbullying at the hands of Zan. 
I also like that they made this character Zan almost contrasting himself, very friendly, not likable, but very in your face in person. And then just night and day doing what needs to be done, I guess, as a content creator in a screen. I love how they use social media as a way to show how two faced and multifaceted people can be. We're going to talk about that more when we get to the car scene. But just to finish off this scene, as we divert into two different plot lines, Paperboy is not having it at all, at all. And if you've ever created content for any amount of time, you've had the trolls, you've had the haters. And like Ern said, don't feel the fire. And this is exactly why this episode is called The Streisand Effect. So if you guys are not aware, back, back, back in the day, Miss Streisand had her house taken by a paparazzi. And this is back when paparazzi photos were it, because nowadays you just go on Instagram to get all your pics. Back in the day, paparazzi would get big dollars to catch celebrities doing things celebrity do and this particular paparazzi got a picture of her house posted it i think this is when the blogs were just just starting up so early aughts and i believe she sued and made a big stink about it and because of that it blew up even more kind of what happened in this scene and throughout the episode where one thing could have just blown over but you feed and fuel into it and it becomes something bigger and it balloons unnecessarily and i'm so happy they called it this because i was thinking that and i'm like what is this episode called again and i googled it and i'm like ah yes the streisand effect barbara streisand has a phenomenon named after her because she just couldn't let it go that someone took a photo of her house i get privacy don't get me wrong but it's a perfect indication of how the machine works. And if you feed into it and you pay attention to it, it becomes problematic. I've discussed this more on my public pod and Patreon pod. The idea that we pay attention, not just with our time, but with our mind and of course with our coins too. So you have to be very attentive of what you decide to give energy to. Let me not get into that because we could talk about that all day and I already have on the podcast, okay? So as we continue in this episode, we'll just do a little bit of Paper Boy Zan and wrap up with Ern and Darius because I'm going to spend a little time on that. Paper Boy goes to get gas. He's still watching his phone. He's getting frustrated. You can see he's irked in his facial expressions. He goes to a pool place. I don't know what to call it, pool bar, whatever. And he's playing with some man that I don't recall we ever see again. So this is probably Paperboy's one friend other than Darius that we're ever introduced to. And they're talking. I love how the friend's like, he's actually funny though. I said, what kind of friend are you? You're not supposed to say that. Then the manager or bartender of the pool house mentions to him that, hey, I seen someone looking for you who's wearing a pink shirt. And I was thinking, is that the Cat Williams character that we're going to see in a couple episodes or someone else? I can't remember. I'm trying to remember things. And I was so excited when I got the Darius's Nigerian line. Remember, guys, if you've watched my reviews, I didn't know he was Nigerian. I completely forgot. So I'm happy that you guys let me know that he let us know in season one. And this was the episode. Back on track, though. So he decides to run up on Zan. He goes to the pizza place. And I think this is so hilarious, but also so realistic. A lot of content creators have to get it how they live it. And it shows the polarity and duality. Here are two people who have an online presence. One is the honest way in real life by selling or delivering pizza. And the other one is pushing weight. And he wants to clear his name because whatever Zan says on social affects his street cred and thus the coins in his pocket. The problem with this is when you flip it, and that's why I say this episode really exemplifies contrast. Maybe Zan is making money the honest way in real life, but his online personality is so disgusting and so off-putting that it's almost like who's worse, the one that's perpetuating something through rap culture or the one who is feeding off of the machine. And I like that they had this discussion in the car. <laughs> I don't even know why Al got in the car with him. But at one point, Al says, I don't want to say certain things because your son sounds like that's not my son. Just even the way he speaks, Zan, I feel like he is on Xanax. Maybe that's why he's called Zan. I don't know. But he's just... He gives me get out energy, like he's not really real, if that makes sense. But I think they did that intentionally because a lot of social media people are fake 
Okay, I met a few, and that's why my podcast is called Authentic because I want to stay grounded in authenticity wherever I go or grow in this social media sphere. I want to stay true to myself. I've seen so many people shift and change. Side note, it is what it is, but it's interesting looking and revisiting a character like Zan and seeing that thanks to TikTok and the aforementioned Vine, when they brought up Vine, I'm like, oh yeah, the precursor. All of these social media apps have created dynamics i'm gonna put it that way it's just funny when i scroll tiktok sometimes let me know if you feel the same no amount of clout attention or views is worth what you're doing but okay let me not judge because everyone has a different reason for being on the platform their discussion was so real moments like these are exactly why i fell in love with atlanta it's so rooted in reality. Here you have this annoying, obnoxious character, Zan, who's speaking nothing but truth to paper boy. He's saying, I'm the other side. I'm a reflection of you, and that's the truth. If you look at it one way, he is an embodiment or a symbolic of the press, or when you think of blogs, just that social media arena that reports on other people. And yes, it might be venomous, but you also have to think, they're doing that because there's a demand. So who's to blame? And also they're reporting on something that the creator, AKA Paperboy, is creating. The way I see it, depending on how you wanna flip it, spin it, and look at it, we're all part of this microcosm. It just depends what character we are in this game. And with the metaverse, it becomes more literal and more insane as time goes on. But let me not go too far off. I wanna finish this plot. Paperboy said he wanted to give him some words, but he didn't wanna say it in front of his son. That's when Zan said, that's not my son, we collab. And this episode dropped back in the day when collabs were level high on YouTube and Vine. So it's really fitting, but it's also a little outdated because I think I don't really see collabs that much. Do you? It's always the things that make people angry or shock value that get trending. That's what I've noticed. So this kid in the back, boop, 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 every other word is a curse word. It's censored out. I'm crying. <laughs> People boy tells him to put on his seatbelt. So we roll up to a place and Zan tells the boy to go out and deliver the pizza. Paper boy's shocked. How are you telling him to go deliver the pizza? Oh, it's a gig we have together. The boy gets robbed, the pizza gets taken, and I think its pockets get empty too. And paper boy's not having any parts of this. He turns to say, Zan, what's up? And Zan's recording. This is classic. I mean, Remember when the World Star era was a thing? This reminds me of Trinity to the Bone when Chet Hanks' character goes, World Star, World Star. Six years later, still the same thing. And when you really, really think about it, a lot of people in the world are like that. I told you guys a story in the podcast about how people were watching someone have some kind of attack on a train I was on a couple months ago and how only myself and two other people actually took the steps to help the person. It's very shocking that people will watch or record rather than do something. It's kind of sad. Paperboy's had enough. He walks out of the car and this is all just a gross example of the society we're in. When you think about what's going trending with the TikTok skits, or even if you've seen those reels or TikToks of kids being unruly, or the challenge where the parents are like, oh, this person's gonna come beat me up, are you gonna help beat up their kid? And the kids are ready to square up. There's so many moments in social media, it's like, why does this get attention? And why is this trending? And viral is really that, viral viral <sighs> i don't think there's anything much to say with the paper boy plot lines so we'll leave it there let's get into darius and urn urn and darius are driving on their way and then they start talking about aids and different conspiracies and at one point he asked who's scott mcqueen who i didn't know who he was and i remember asking myself the same thing years ago he's an actor from the 1950s and 60s haven't seen any of his movies was trying to read up on the bio to see how it relates i just think it was interjected as Someone who was prominent that black people should know, that don't know. Ern is trying to sell his iPhone for a whopping $190. And I'm thinking, that's as bad as the Apple deal. Because you know when you try to trade up your devices, they give you pennies. I remember the one time I went to the Apple store for a laptop. And they said it was vintage. And I only had it for five years. That felt like a slap in the face. Meanwhile, Darius is really watching this ward hard and all the memories come back to how this plot line goes so far, so quick. I don't know what 
was in Ern's mind to trust Darius, because at this point, they're not even friends. But he agrees to, instead of get the 190 that he really needs, get the sword. They go on this epic adventure to trade off the sword at this Asian mafia house where Darius schools him on Gangaskan jeans. And Ern questions, is this racist or nah? I love how they're playing that song from back in the day that was really trendy on YouTube. I don't remember what the name of the group is, but I will put it here. Now when you see how much K-pop has blown up, I love how this symbolizes impatience and how people who are poor or broke cannot make investment decisions along the way. Here we have Darius, this very esoteric, airy fairy character who goes to trade the sword for a dog and take the dog to a farm, which before we get into that, what was that guy screaming about? I had half the mind to ask one of my friends who knows Mandarin if that was even Mandarin, what he was saying. And I said, it's not that serious. If it is as serious, let me know down below. We get to a farm. The King Corso gets traded off. Darius seems so pleased with himself. Ern is like, okay, where's the money? 2K. He's like, you'll get it in September. I don't know what month it is that this episode takes place, but it's not September and Ern is not having it. He has a very classy meltdown. Very classy meltdown if I do say so myself. He even admits, you know, I'm just really stressed. And Darius explains to him that you'll get it in September when the course, King Corso's breed and you get 2K for a pup. Ern's face looked like he could throw up in this moment. That's because when you don't have the money to invest or play with or allow to grow, you can't make decisions like that along the way. It really piggybacks on what we discussed in last week's review. The idea that whether you're poor or broke, and he says he's poor, but I still think he's broke. There's a desertion between that. You can't invest. And that is why in present day, when Jay-Z said he wanted to open up a Bitcoin school and the people in the hood or borough that he wanted to were like, no, nah, we don't need that. We're going to invest in Bitcoin for what? We can't even afford food. But they were trying to say, well, you can buy Jordans. And they're trying to say that's different. I don't have any words on this, at least for now. I need to do more research, but I can see both sides when it comes to wanting to lift up your community by giving them the same awareness and knowledge and education that other ethnicities have that uplevel themselves and create generational wealth. But how can you make wealth from nothing? That is the big discussion in this episode and even in present day with the Jay-Z episode I gave you with the Jay-Z example that I gave you. And I'm gonna turn it to you. How do you think you can create, not even generational wealth, but up-level yourself if you're in such a low place? The craziest part is at the end of it, Darius gives him his phone, Ern is like, I can't take it. He says, take it, I get a new one every month, or was it every year? Whatever the frequency was, I was like, wait, Darius doesn't work as far as I know, so how is he buying a new iPhone that frequently? Planned obsolescence is real. So Darius has got it like that. At least Ern is going to get more money from this newer iPhone and 2K in a couple months whenever September comes. I thought this whole episode was so hilarious. I love the way it ended. The cinematography was perfection. The space that they created with where the tree is, where the car was, just even the blocking of the characters interacting in both plot lines really did speak to just where they're at mentally. And I think this entire episode was a illustration or an illusion on mental health and how there's so many elements, whether it's social media weighing on you or your finances, even though it was two different ways of telling the same story, we see the contrast in all the characters and how they're reformulating and how they're defining the worlds based on where they are and where they want to go. One of my favorite lines, again, from Darius was at the end when he said, we're friends now. And I thought about it. It's just that simple. It's a level of trust, going through something, seeing who a person is when the ice breaks. Ern could have reacted completely differently, been disrespectful to Darius. He was just frustrated and he aired how he felt he was actually vulnerable with them. And I think that takes a lot for a man to say, I don't got it like that. Van needed that money. Lottie needed that money. I'm broke. I can't wait. And I think that gave this scene the texture that it needed instead of it being this either humorous or blow up of a drama i just 
it still stands to be one of my favorite episodes up there with Woods. So that's all I got to say. I'm sure I missed something. So don't come for me. Just let me know down below. And until next week's episode, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love